Today's story is about an incident that occurred on February 21, 2003, in Fukuoka Prefecture, Japan, where three Chinese international students murdered a Japanese family. Within Japan, suspicions arose about whether someone was behind the Chinese students who had committed the actual murders. On February 21, 2003, the bodies of four family members were found in the waters around Hakata Bay in Fukuoka, Japan. The deceased family members were found handcuffed, with weights attached to the handcuffs. After initiating an investigation, the police arrested three suspects in Japan and China respectively. The suspects were Wei Wei, Wang Liang, and Yang Ning. These three Chinese international students were studying Japanese at a school in Fukuoka and working part-time to cover their living expenses. However, their earnings fell short of their expenses, leading them to contemplate ways to earn more money. Initially, they resorted to theft from acquaintances and workplaces. As they continued their criminal activities, their sense of guilt diminished. They began planning more significant crimes, driven by the desire to steal more money. However, they were concerned that larger crimes would lead to more persistent police investigations. Consequently, they pondered how to commit a complete crime without getting caught by the police. In June 2003, while Wang was on his way to work, he noticed a restaurant after passing numerous houses and buildings. In front of the restaurant, an expensive Mercedes-Benz was parked. Upon seeing the car, he speculated that the restaurant owner was wealthy and might be keeping tens of millions of yen in the bank and home safes. The owner of the restaurant was Shinjiro Matsumoto, and Wang began observing Matsumoto. Wang discovered Matsumoto's residence and shared this information with his friends, Wei and Yang. The three of them started planning together. They devised ways to delay the discovery of their crime as much as possible. Their plan involved killing the victims and disposing of the bodies in the sea. Initially, they had considered burying the bodies in the mountains, but due to the Matsumoto family being four in number, they anticipated that digging a hole would take too much time. Therefore, they opted for the sea. On June 17 and 18, 2003, they purchased four handcuffs and weights from a store near Matsumoto's house to sink the victims' bodies in the sea. They also meticulously planned and tested the route from Matsumoto's house to the sea, measuring distances and estimating travel times. On the night of June 19, 2003, at 11 p.m., they put their plan into action. Wei, Wang, and Yang trespassed into Matsumoto's backyard, scaling the fence. Initially, their plan was to threaten Matsumoto as soon as he returned home and forced their way inside. However, upon entering the backyard, they noticed a first-floor window was open. To avoid leaving fingerprints, they wore gloves and silently infiltrated the house. Once inside, they successfully scouted the premises. On the first floor, Matsumoto's wife was taking a shower in the bathroom, while on the second floor, their 11-year-old son and 8-year-old daughter were sleeping. Wei and Wang first attacked Matsumoto's wife on the first floor, while Yang kept watch over the children. Despite her cries and resistance, Matsumoto's wife was quickly subdued by their sudden assault. They grabbed her by the head and forced her into the bathtub, where tragically, she suffocated. They handcuffed her lifeless hands and stole about $100 in cash and credit cards from her wallet. Afterward, they proceeded upstairs with Yang, entered Matsumoto's son's room first, made him unconscious, then went into the daughter's room, taped her mouth shut, and handcuffed her hands. They didn't kill the daughter, planning instead to use her as leverage against Matsumoto. If Matsumoto didn't reveal his bank account password, they threatened to kill his daughter. Holding Matsumoto's daughter downstairs on the sofa, they waited for Matsumoto. Around 1.40 a.m., Matsumoto finished work and returned home. Completely unsuspecting of intruders, he entered the house while talking to a friend on the phone. Wang was waiting for Matsumoto in the kitchen on the first floor and gestured for him to come over as soon as he entered. Shocked, Matsumoto followed, and in the living room, he saw his daughter. Kneeling down, he pleaded with the perpetrators, offering them everything he had if they spared his daughter. The criminals handcuffed Matsumoto, stole about $150 in cash and credit cards, and demanded the PIN for the bank account, which Matsumoto reluctantly disclosed. Afterward, in front of Matsumoto, they murdered his daughter and began assaulting him, strangling him. When he didn't die, they decided to dispose of the three bodies first. 
They put the son's body into Matsumoto's car, with one of the culprits driving, and headed to the pre-planned location, Hakata Bay. Around 3 a.m., one of the culprits, with handcuffs on his hands, attached weights to the son's lifeless body and threw it into the cold sea. Then, the culprit returned to Matsumoto's house with the other two culprits and the remaining two bodies, loaded them into the car, and around 4 a.m., they headed back to Hakata Bay. After killing Matsumoto, who was still alive, they attached weights to the handcuffs on his body and submerged him in the sea along with the remaining two bodies. Afterward, they disposed of the tools and cash cards used in the crime and returned home. They had stolen approximately $250, and although they attempted to withdraw cash using the stolen cards, they didn't find much money in the bank, so they abandoned the attempt. To delay the discovery of their crime, they had attached weights to the bodies and handcuffs, but their plan unraveled just a day later when the bodies of the Matsumoto family were discovered in Hakata Bay. Fukuoka police set up an investigative headquarters to look into the case. Initially, Japanese police believed the crime stemmed from someone harboring a grudge against Matsumoto. During their investigation around the crime scene, they learned about a man who had purchased tools potentially used in the crime in one go. Fortunately, the man's face was captured on CCTV, and the police issued a warrant for his arrest. Coincidentally, a student who attended the same school as Wong provided a tip to the police, confirming that the man in the CCTV footage was Wong. They investigated his call records and discovered that he had discussed the crime over the phone while planning it, implicating not only him but also Yang. Meanwhile, unlike Wang and Yang, who fled to China, Wei, who had remained in Japan, wanted to escape to China but lacked the money for a flight. He asked his girlfriend for a loan, but when she refused, he assaulted her. He managed to borrow money from other friends and bought a plane ticket to China on August 6 to flee. However, his assaulted girlfriend reported the violence to the police, leading to Wei's arrest as the assailant. During this process, the police discovered his connection to the Matsumoto family murder case. The Japanese police requested cooperation from the Chinese government, leading to the arrest of Wang and Yang, who had fled to China, on August 19. Due to the absence of an extradition treaty between Japan and China, Wang and Yang were interrogated in China. In September, Fukuoka police went to China to discuss investigation methods with Chinese authorities. The three culprits captured in Japan and China began shifting blame onto each other. Wei, caught in Japan, testified that Wang had persuaded him, saying there was a lucrative opportunity despite the difficulty. He implied that Wang seemed to have received a contract to commit murder from someone else, and Wei had received only $70 for his successful part, the rest of the payment was still pending. However, Wang denied all of Wei's claims. Ultimately, all three were convicted. On January 24, 2005, the Liaoyang Intermediate People's Court handed down a death sentence to Yang in a life imprisonment verdict to Wang. Wang's execution was spared due to his confession and cooperation with investigators. He knelt down and apologized during the sentencing hearing. However, family members of the victims and many in the Japanese media criticized the life sentence as being too lenient. Subsequently, on February 3, 2005, Yang was also sentenced to death, a decision that was upheld by the Liaoyang Superior People's Court after dismissing the appeal. Yang was executed on July 12, 2005, at the age of 25. While Yang and Wang's trial in China coincided with Wei's trial in Japan, the Chinese government did not issue an official response to Wei's prosecution. On March 23, 2004, Wei was officially charged in Japan by Judge Hiroshi Suyama of the Fukuoka District Court. The decision to prosecute was largely affirmed during the initial trial, and on February 1, 2005, discussions commenced regarding whether the Fukuoka District Public Prosecutor's Office should pursue the death penalty. On May 19, 2005, during the first trial presided over by Judge Kawaguchi at the Fukuoka District Court, Wei was sentenced to death. Subsequently, the Court of Appeals, after considering Wei's case, provided comprehensive details about the motive, the legal proceedings, the roles of the three assailants, and Wei's apology to the victims' families. On March 8, 2007, the Court of Appeals affirmed the District Court's decision in favor of the death penalty. 
Wei's appeal to the Supreme Court was rejected by the presiding judge on October 20, 2011. The death sentence was officially confirmed the following month. Approximately eight years and one month after Wei's death sentence was upheld, Minister of Justice issued the execution order for Wei on December 23, 2019. He was executed on December 26 at the Fukuoka Detention House at the age of 40. Some people started suspecting the involvement of others besides the three culprits. There were rumors about the deceased Matsumoto, suggesting he had trouble with the Yakuza. In 2001, during the mad cow disease crisis, the restaurant he was managing closed down, leaving him in substantial debt. He tried to repay his debts by operating a women's clothing company with relatives, but even that venture remained in the red. Rumors circulated that he resorted to selling marijuana to make money, although marijuana was found in his home, there was no definitive evidence confirming his involvement. Additionally, there was a mysterious car following the culprits driving Matsumoto's car to Hakata Bay. This was verified through the police's N system, an automatic license plate recognition system. The system confirmed that the suspicious car followed the same route as the culprit's car. However, the police didn't obtain further specific information, they didn't investigate this aspect of the case. On the day of the incident, a white vehicle was found in front of Matsumoto's house, occupied by a man in his 50s and a woman in her 40s. They entered Matsumoto's home, where witnesses reported hearing sounds of a struggle and screams. However, the police did not pursue this line of investigation any further. The culprits claimed that their motive was money, but approximately $700 in cash was left untouched in Matsumoto's house. People questioned why they didn't take the money if money was their motivation. Furthermore, there were questions about why the culprits purchased the weights used in the crime from a store near Matsumoto's house. The handcuffs used were toy handcuffs, leading people to speculate that these items might have been deliberately purchased near Matsumoto's house to incriminate the three captives as the culprits. While people speculated about the possible involvement of others, the case concluded with the execution of two and life imprisonment for one.